Hello Internet, Internet. Big Dave is here, and I am cheap. Sure. Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and this is Uzi Earth Adventure. This game comes to us from Awesome Games Studio. It was released earlier this year, eventually greenlit, and it is now available on Steam for 10 bucks. A heads up to my bundle buddies out there, this game was featured in at least two bundles that I know of, the Group E's Build a Greenlight Bundle, the original Build a Greenlight Bundle, and the Indie Royale Valentine's Day 2.0 Bundle. I am very happy to say that the awesome games guys have done right by those early adopters and provided Steam keys very promptly for those of us who purchased the game in bundles early on. It's great to see a developer do right by the people that really got them on Steam through being early adopters of the DRM free version or the Desura version, spreading the word about the game, playing it, voting for it on Greenlight. So very happy to see that because not all developers seem to feel obligated to provide Steam keys to people who purchase their game earlier in bundles, especially bundles that clearly state they are about getting votes on Greenlight, and I find that to be kind of scummy. So I'm glad to say that the awesome games guys get a big thumbs up from me for doing that. Uzi is described by these guys as a traditional old school platformer that will bring back your childhood memories. The additional wrinkle is that it has a kid friendly difficulty level. Now on the surface, this seems like a really savvy marketing move because this game is clearly aimed at me, a 30 something gamer who played platformers in the 80s and 90s. Now, if you're a 30-something gamer, you might have a kid, and you might be interested in that kid actually playing games. I can tell you as a father that, uh, yes, I'm very interested in my son uh, playing games. It probably, well, I'm interested in him being happy. Yeah, probably number one is him being happy in life, and number two is him being an avid gamer so that we can share that together. I'm not trying to force it on him, but I certainly will introduce it to him when the time is right. And a game like Uzi says, hey, this can be the first game you play with your kid because, hey, it's got a difficulty level that's really not going to challenge them. It's not going to uh, frustrate them. As you can see, just uh, head here into the uh, options menu and you, he you head over to, uh, what's it called? Kid. Kid difficulty. Then you can't die. So it's kind of cool. It's kind of interesting. Uh, I'll share my thoughts on it uh, as we play through the game here. Uh, controls not rebindable, but it's a two-button platformer, so I haven't found that to be an issue on the keyboard or on the controller. Let's get right into it. We have the story mode, we have the challenge mode, we have the arcade mode. I am about two hours into this game, two hours of gameplay time, and I am 30% through it. So that should give you an idea of about what you're going to get out of this. The challenge and arcade modes could extend this game out to maybe around 10 hours of total content, which is pretty good for 10 bucks. Story mode. We've got five levels per world and a boss. So I am just getting into the second uh, second world here. I am on the second level of the second world, as you can see. I have not quite successfully completed it yet, so let's go ahead and just start there. So Uzi has a great platformer storyline. It has that uh, minimalist backstory that you like to see in a old school platformer. Uzi is a delivery man, a space delivery man, who ran out of gas and crash landed on Earth. His ship, as you would have it, as, as luck would have it, uh, broke into several parts. I bet as many parts as there are worlds in this game. And he now has to retrieve those parts. You're also grabbing parts of your space suit, which uh, gives you special powers. It's how the game introduces its additional uh, features, things like double jumping and uh, butt stomping and uh, wall jumping and that sort of stuff. It's a nice way to gate that stuff. I, I kind of I kind of like it. Uh, it gives you, doles it out little by little in an actual story-driven way. It's not just, oh, hey, you've hit this level, so therefore you have this power. It is, hey, you found this piece of your spacesuit, uh, and now you can do this additional thing that you could not do at all before. Kind of neat. So you see this little uh, ghostly gentleman here. The game does have leaderboards, and it does then have ghosts as a result of having those leaderboards. A really nice function. I really, really like that. Uh, and it just adds a little bit of something to a game. Uh, I have found several secret areas because of the ghost, and I uh, have also felt ashamed of the ghost's prowess at platforming when uh, very often I have failed miserably. Now, this is a good game, I would say. Uh, good is, is, is a way to describe this game. I think another way to, to describe it is, is uh, very average. Uh, it does a lot of stuff right, and it doesn't really do that much wrong, but it just isn't special. Uh, unlike so many indie platformers, it's not trading on that 
one cool mechanic uh, that indie platformers tend to go with. Oh no, that guy put spikes out on his head. There we go. I've never seen him do that before. All right. It doesn't have that one cool mechanic like changing gravity or turning the world or anything like that. It's just a, a guy who wants to... Now, it's just a guy who wants to get the parts of his ship back because he doesn't like Earth because everything on Earth wants to kill him. So he would rather just go home and back to, you know, whatever it is that he does at home when he's not delivering space stuff. Maybe he's got kids. Maybe he's got, God, I don't know, a porn business. Oh. But yeah, so it's, it's just a straightforward game uh, in almost every way possible. Uh, these little signs every now and then kind of give you a little bit of extra... Yeah, stomp on ice to break it. Yeah, it. Seems a little obvious, but, you know, somebody might miss that. Uh, but yeah, again, a completely average game in every way. Some people might use the word mediocre. I don't tend to use the word mediocre because I find that for some reason it's it has connotations to it that I don't necessarily intend. Uh, some people think mediocre means that something is bad when really all it means is that something is completely average and not special in almost every way possible. Um... Oh, I was on those spikes for a second, and I somehow didn't get hit. All right, I'll take it. But that's Uzi. It, it is completely, uh, it is completely ordinary, uh, but not in a bad way. Not, not at all. It's a solid game that I have enjoyed playing. But also, it's not a game I'm probably going to come back to. I might put another four or five hours into it, maybe. Uh, you know, I am glad to see the difficulty sort of ramping up. Ice levels, though, one of my least favorite things in games, uh, to sort of artificially inflate the difficulty by making everything slick, uh, I think is, is sort of too easy, sort of, sort of a cop-out, uh, in a way. Uh, but also, you know, I don't really hold it against the developer. It's, it's a pretty bog-standard thing that, that people do, that developers do. I mean, there are ice levels in almost every great classic platformer, uh, so you would expect it in a game like this that is emulating classic platformers. Whether I like it or not, they don't really care. So the uh, other thing that I really wanted to touch on with this game is that claim of a kid difficulty level. I'm of two minds about this, because when I was playing games as a youngster, games were brutally difficult. And very often I wanted to quit those games, but I stuck with them, and sticking with them ended up being quite a rewarding experience. Now, a game where you can't die and there is no real challenge seems to kind of lack part of exactly what they're going for, which is emulating that traditional feeling. I'm just Sorry, I'm getting a little caught up here in the actual gameplay. Uh, that traditional feeling of, of a platformer. Um, I would miss that if it was gone. The, the inability to learn and to feel a sense of accomplishment through mastering a game's systems. Um, for there to be a chance to to lose. I mean, that's a big part of gaming, a, a, a fail state. And I know a lot of games don't have them anymore, but for me personally, it's a big part of how I play games. The uh, the, the thought that you're going to get a game over, you're going to get a continue, uh, continue screen, or maybe you won't have continues. Um, so I'm of two minds about that. I think that my son would greatly benefit uh, when he's ready from a game that introduces him to concepts slowly. A little slide mechanic here. But at the same time, when I was a kid, I got my butt beat at all these games, and I think it made me a better gamer in the end. It, it certainly made me enjoy games uh, better, because I felt a sense of accomplishment. If I were to beat this on kid difficulty, I don't know what I would really think about what I had done. I don't know that if I would feel that it necessarily has any value or not. It, it, uh. Okay. Slide. Uh, it's hard to say. You know, I know that we are sort of in that era where things are not necessarily prized for their difficulty or when they are prized for their difficulty that's all they're prized for uh, games like Spelunky and Super Meat Boy uh, it's about the fact that these games are difficult that's what makes them special uh, why can't a game be a lot of things including really difficult uh, this game is not extremely difficult uh, it, it does have its punishing parts certainly and it does have its trial and error certainly but I just don't, I don't really understand, I guess, the gamer in me doesn't understand why you need a kid difficulty level. The father in me understands it. You know, I, I have seen my kid 
you know, throw a, a Kindle across a room because he can't get Thomas the Tank Engine to, you know, go into Knapford Station and drop off his bundles of twigs. But at the same time, you got to learn, right? You got to evolve. I'm going to get hit by that. And I'm going to die. Yeah, so this isn't a debate that I'm going to solve talking to myself right here, but it's an interesting thing that 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 confronts us as parents and gamers who want to share this hobby with our kids. Uh, do you dumb it down or do you throw them to the wolves as you were thrown when you were a kid? Hmm. I think it's a question that is uh, bigger than this video, bigger than this game, certainly. Anyway, guys, this has been Uzi Earth Adventure, a completely average but fun title. It is available for $10 on Steam. I would recommend that you take a look at it, especially during sales. And as I said, it is, uh, it's a bundle game. So check your bundles. You may already own it. All right, guys, I have been Big Dave. And until next time, take it easy.